All right, this is sort of a bonus video for our DIY off-grid solar electrical installation series. This is the good, the bad, and the ugly. Everything that went wrong, everything that went right, and uh, quite a few things went wrong, which is why this series is taking a while for us to get out. Um, we had two solid weeks of rain, so that delayed us in getting our panels set up. We got our uh, power center, and I went ahead and bought a pre-wired power center, so hoping that it would save me some time, at least a day's worth of time. Uh, and we got it hung on the wall. That thing weighs about 186 pounds. We got it hung on the wall, turned it on, and it ran for about 12 hours. And then one of my charge controllers went flaky and started reporting over voltage when there was no over voltage. About an hour after that, the inverter quit. I had a temperature fault. And uh, so we had a heck of a time getting all that remedied and getting the warranty parts. I called Midnight Solar, told them what the problem was. They had no problem, no issues. They asked me a few questions, immediately shipped me out a new controller, which is what I just got here. Um, and their warranty service is excellent. I mean, they pre-shipped me a new charge controller and I'll ship them, and they prepaid the uh, shipping for me to ship it back, the, the, the bad one. Um, so they're, they're an awesome company. I'll only buy Midnight Solar stuff from now on. Uh, the other thing that went bad was one of the uh, surge protection devices on the second array uh, has condensation in it, so it was not sealed from the factory. And you don't want condensation in there because it can eventually corrode and that can cause your voltages to do weird things too. That's also in this box. So again, Midnight Solar, thumbs up, double thumbs up. Amazing company, that's why they are have such a great name in the industry. Now, Magnum, the uh, Magnusign inverter, totally different story. Their warranty service kind of sucks. I called them, told them what was going on. The guy on the phone, after I got a hold of him after two days, uh, the guy on the phone thought he knew what it was, but wouldn't send me the part. I had to go to an authorized service center. That's about a two hour drive from here. And uh, so I had arranged to have him overnight it to the service center. I had spoken to the service center guy, had to coordinate all this. I drove the inverter to the service center uh, and was expecting the guy to fix it and then I could leave with it. The guy fixed it, but that didn't fix it. Apparently there was something else wrong with the inverter. So this is like, a, we're a week into having no power because I got my old system tore out. I got my new system in, but it, it's half done. So we're running on generators. So I had to drive back from that service center that day. I left the inverter there. I'm just kind of pissed off. Last resort, I called altestore.com. And this is a reason why you want to work with a good distributor. Uh, inside baseball, a little full disclosure here. I worked in the electrical distribution industry for 10 years as a uh, head of IT. So I understand how they work. I know the distributors, the dealers, all those kinds of things uh, and these guys are just that they're a distributor they're not a manufacturer they don't warrant anything they sell the stuff so I called them explained what the problem was asked them if they would overnight me an inverter Saturday delivery so that I could get up and running she was perfect Sonia was the queen of customer service if you're out there and you have a company that is customer focused you should model your customer service people after Sonya at altestore.com. All that she cared about was making sure I got up and running. She immediately FedExed me a new inverter, and uh, Saturday came, which the, was the next day, and the FedEx guy didn't show up. He just decided to, he, he wasn't gonna come that day, I guess, I don't know what happened. So we got it Monday, which was yesterday, and I installed it, and it works perfect. The new inverter works great. But the whole warranty service process of Magnum's of Magnum inverters is crap. I will never buy another Magnum inverter. I don't care how good they are, how good they say they are. I won't get one just because you have to deal with that. The whole reason we built our system the way we did with two charge controllers, we've got two generators, is backup, backup, backup. But we didn't have a backup inverter. But the first inverter is still at the service center. The guy can't get the right part sent to him from Magnum, but if and when he does get it fixed, 
I will then have a backup inverter. So we'll be double backed up all over the place. Anyway, that was a rant just to explain kind of the whole situation that has been going on with this project. AltEstore.com is where I will always buy my stuff. I will always buy Midnight Solar stuff. Probably won't buy another Magnum product, or uh, Sensata Technologies product. Uh, and that's that. Well, that was the bad and the ugly. Here's some of the good. This is Kit. She's a teacup Yorkie. And uh, we got her about a week ago. She's going to be our little house doggy. Might get another one. I don't know. They're kind of cool. Cute, portable pet. <laughs> so I'm going to uh, replace this SPD that has condensation in it. I'm going to replace this bad charge controller and then we'll have our system 100%. The good news is this morning, like I said, we charged our batteries on half our array with only the one charge controller in about an hour. So like by 10.30 a.m. batteries were 100% and we just were rocking and rolling. So. Installing inverter number two because the first one was junk. Hopefully, this will get us back in business. Now we gotta wire it all back up. Perfect example. This ground lug, the set screw, the slot on the set screw is offset out of center. So it just snapped. Not real impressed with these inverters so far. The magnet sign has a real good name historically. At some point in the past, I don't know when, they were bought by a company called Sensata. And since then, I don't think the quality is the same. Maybe it's just my bad luck, but the first inverter was no good. It had two bad boards in it. This one, I'm gonna hook up and we'll see if it works, but so far I have not been impressed with Magnum inverters. Got the inverter hooked up. We'll flip on the batteries, the main battery switch over here. And hopefully this thing powers up. Cross your fingers. All right, well, I turned it on and there's no faults. The last one had a temperature fault, thought it was 303 degrees, which was impossible. So now we're gonna set up the inverter. Gotta set the clock. Okay, now it's in search mode. I've got the main load center turned on over there to the house and it's searching for um, draw. So I'm gonna turn on the inverter breaker. Inverting. All right, so it's producing power. It's taking power from the batteries, inverting it, and putting it out AC to the house. Got the SPD on. Now we'll put the uh, new charge controller to replace the bad one. These things are pretty heavy. This weighs about. 12 pounds. And you got a battery temperature sensor, which we're not going to use because we already have it installed. All right, this is the lead you plug into the front cover here to get it to the display to work. This is your Ethernet port if you want to do monitor it on your computer. This is for the battery temperature sensor which we're not going to use because our master controller already has that. And we're gonna link these together in Follow Me. And these are the terminals to connect your battery plus, battery minus, PV minus, PV plus. They're pretty simple to uh, set up. Um, these are the uh, vents. These knockouts are already knocked out. They don't know where you wanna run wires, so I know that we want our knockouts, or our vents in here. Right. 
and then our wires are going to run through here through a little channel I'm keeping that sticker because it's just cool I'm keeping that sticker because it's just cool Now the reason I took this, I shut this controller down and took the face off so that I could make sure I got these uh, connected together correctly. So <coughs> this bottom one, right, this uh, slave out goes into the master in right there and then kind of run this down here into this little white clip and then the master from here goes into the slave in here now that allows you to configure the follow me feature where you can network uh, a whole bunch of these together like up to 255 of them and uh, <clears throat> so this one has the battery temperature sensor connected to it which goes down to this battery here and so when this gets battery temperature it can send it to all the other ones everything is reconnected uh, got it bolted up ground is connected the positive from the array is here negative battery positive battery and all of our follow me cables are hooked up everything looks good so I'm going to test some voltage and I'm going to put the fronts back on so you take this gadget here plug it in it's just like a ethernet cable and make sure you don't pinch it on anything almost forgot this part I'm going to cover these terminal blocks with this blue piece that they give you just to make it nice okay moment of truth everything's buttoned back up we're going to power up these controllers let's give some power to this one first let it boot up Okay, uh, we'll turn on the input from the solar panels. It's about 6 o'clock right now and all the panels are right about in shade so we're not going to get uh, much but it's resting anyway. Uh, actually now it's going to charge a little bit. Alright, so this is the new one. We're going to see if we get I got to program this one to work with this one. All right, so far so good. I got this programmed to match this. This one's following this one. Uh, this voltage is normal now. The last one was crazy, but I have not turned on the power from the panels to the controller on this one. So that's what we're gonna do now. And cross your fingers. Eighty-three. It's equalizing. Three hundred fifteen watts. Those are the, like two panels are still in the sun over there. So this one is getting pushing five point six amps. This one's pushing one point four. This one's all the way in the shade right now. This one has not yet fully been moved into the shade yet so working now everything is a hundred percent well finally we're a hundred percent everything's working exactly the way it's supposed to the way it should have from the very beginning 
And so that's it. That's going to wrap up our DIY solar electric installation series. I hope it was helpful for some of you. It's been an adventure for me. Uh, I think it was about three weeks from the time we ordered till the time we just flicked it all on and for the second time. So we got a few more videos coming up on more of this solar type stuff. Uh, we're going to hook up a uh, 24 volt battery bank for just DC appliances and we're st we still got to make our rain catchment system. So stay tuned and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. I need a holster. Do they make like fanny packs for dogs? I could hang, I could hang two of them up. You sleeping? Kit. 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 Come on, Kit. <laughs>